Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. And today, let's do something a little bit different. We're gonna be exploring Samsung's newest One UI 7 together, directly on the phone. This is their top flagship that just came out, the Galaxy S25 Ultra. And we're gonna go over all of the exciting new AI features and all that good stuff. So let's dive into it and let me know down in the comments what you think about this new format. Okay, so starting off on the home screen, it's pretty much what we've seen from Samsung for a while now. You've got your apps and your widgets, and Samsung has tweaked the look of the icons here. The app drawer is on by default. You can long press on app icons to call up shortcuts for quick actions. There's also the option now to turn off the icon labels if you want to. Of course, you get a suite of Google Apps. And there are Microsoft ones too, since they have a partnership with Samsung. There are a bunch of proprietary Samsung apps as well. These include the File Manager, the Internet Browser, and Samsung Health. You can place supported widgets in a stack and swipe through them. And with custom camera widgets, you can start off in a specific shooting mode and save pictures in an album of your choice. Of course, the home screen gets the Google feed, as always. One change layout-wise is that Samsung has split the notification shade in two. Swiping down from the left corner will get you a dedicated notification panel. And swiping down from the right corner will get you a control panel. The task switcher is pretty straightforward. And you can long press the app icons on the top and drag them to different parts of the screen to open them up in a pop-up view or as part of a split screen. There's also an edge panel, an area for shortcuts that you access by swiping from the edge of the screen. From here, it's easy to launch apps into a split screen. And you can store shortcuts for split screen pairs as well. Another neat feature is what Samsung calls Now Bar. It lives on the lock screen and lets you access info and controls at a glance for things like playing media, maps, or even current events like sports scores. This goes together with a new AI-based feature called Now Brief. It gives you a readout about the weather and your daily routine. You can access it both on the lock screen and the home screen. Of course, AI is a huge part of the software experience here. Samsung promotes the interface recognizing natural language input for searching the gallery or settings. Put my phone on silent mode. Do not disturb. There you go. From the edge panel, you can easily access some AI features as well, like AI Select. It analyzes the screen's content and gives you plenty of options, like editing, setting it as a wallpaper, or even creating a GIF. Let's try that out. There you go. Brand new GIF. And then there's Drawing Assist, which is a way to create AI-generated artwork. Let's see. Banana with sunglasses. <laughs> Magic. And there's a live interpreter function, again powered by AI. Hola, como estas? Wow. There's also easy access to the AI features in the Samsung keyboard, like a translator and chat assist. With chat assist, the AI can give you suggestions to rephrase your words. And that's not all for AI features. You can transcribe a conversation into text with speaker labels, and the AI can then summarize that for notes. The circle to search function has been upgraded, so it can now listen to audio that's playing and provide info about the music track. Let's see if it can recognize Billie Jean. Ba <laughs> 
Billie Jean by Breathe Carolina. All right. Almost there. There's support for the Google Gemini AI Assistant, of course. You can call it up on the fly by holding down on the power button. Gemini, draw me a lion. Whoa. Thanks, Gemini. And Samsung is excited about something called cross-app action. This means you can ask Google Gemini to carry out requests that involve multiple apps. For example, you can check out restaurants nearby and copy the information to notes to check out later. Let's give it a shot. Gemini, can you check out restaurants near the Stockholm airport and copy the information to notes for me? All right, there you go. For now, the feature only supports Samsung One UI system apps and Google Apps. Within the gallery, you have access to powerful tools like Generative Edit, where you can add, remove, and resize objects in your photos. And for your videos, there's a new AI-based noise reduction feature. It's useful if you're recording on a windy day or need to boost the volume of your voice. And when you're playing back a video in the gallery, you can tap and hold to slow it down. The extra frames for the slow-mo are generated by AI. There are plenty of other Samsung-specific features which aren't AI-based. Samsung's Gaming Hub is where you can find all of your games, and also provides Do Not Disturb options, performance options, and shortcuts to social media platforms. All of these things can be accessed through an overlay in-game, and it's cool that you can also see the resource utilization. Through connected devices, you can see what's connected, and you have access to all of the features that work with other devices, like Quick Share, Smart View, and Samsung's DeX. That can connect you to a monitor to get a PC-like experience. The camera app has seen a bit of an update for One UI 7. It's a lot more out of the way now. The camera mode carousel now sits under the shutter button, and even opening the extra modes no longer hides your entire viewfinder. And a new Galaxy Log video mode allows you to do the color grading by yourself, if you're into those sort of things. In One UI, your security and privacy options are easy to find. They're organized into a specific dashboard and settings. The secure folder is handy for keeping files and apps hidden and safe. It's protected by Samsung's Knox encryption. You can add a passcode or biometric log. The battery settings menu provides some options to tweak. For example, you can choose a custom percentage to which you want your battery charged. Finally, Samsung provides software updates for seven years down the line, but it depends on the type of phone. On the flagships, you'll get seven years of support, but for the cheaper phones, it's of course less. So there you have it, guys. Samsung didn't provide many new hardware updates for this year's flagships, instead focusing on new software features. And as you just saw, there are plenty here, and we only really scratched the surface. So which of these features is your favorite? Let us know down in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.